Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Carol Folt, and I'm the Chancellor of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And it is our great honor to be a part of this historic gathering of some of the world's greatest scientists and an incredibly special privilege for me to be the person able to introduce tonight's distinguished lecturer, Dr. Stephen Hawking, speaking on quantum black holes. Many institutions and people partnered to make this conference and this very special evening lecture possible. And I'd like to give a couple thanks right now, beginning with the Nordic Institute for Theoretical Physics, Nordita, which everyone in this room knows is a world-renowned international center for theoretical physics research. Nordita is co-hosted by KTH Royal Institute of Technology, the largest and the oldest technical university in Sweden, responsible for a third of the country's technical and engineering research. And Stockholm University, another leading global institution ranked among the top 50 universities in Europe. I'd also like to thank the Julian Swiger Foundation for its support of and belief in the importance of this week's event. And the Center for Theoretical Cosmology, CTC, at the prestigious Department of Applied Mathematics and Theoretical Physics at the University of Cambridge, which, of course, is the academic home of today's esteemed speaker. I'd also like to give special thanks to Dr. Laura Mersini Houghton, who is a key organizer of this event whose work on black holes has spurred much debate and who brought together this week important people to be part of this wonderful conversation. She's a professor in UNC's Department of Physics and Astronomy, and she helped the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill be able to partner with these prestigious institutions to make this event a reality. Laura's had an office nearby Professor Hawking at Cambridge, and for years, they discussed the issues of black holes and the information loss paradox. Please join me in thanking all of these partners and organizers. The conference and the sponsors and the participants coming from across the globe are proof of the global nature of science. UNC Chapel Hill is actually several thousand miles away from Stockholm, so I'll just take a second to tell you a little bit about my university. We aren't going to see, seem old compared to many historic universities in Europe and Asia, but we were founded in 1789, just after the signing of the United States Constitution, and UNC is America's oldest public university. Chapel Hill is located in an area you may have heard of called the Research Triangle, which is home, like this region, to a number of outstanding research institutions. And I'm told that there are more PhDs per square mile living there than any other place in America. It's, it's a leader in research in the United States. It has a research enterprise of nearly a billion dollars in federal research. Many leading scholars have been a part of that faculty or passed through on sabbatical and doing research there. For example, John Wheeler, the physicist who popularized the term black hole, was on the faculty for a time. Peter Higgs, the Nobel Prize winning physicist from the University of Edinburgh, famous for the Higgs boson, worked on one of his key theoretical papers during a sabbatical that he took in Chapel Hill. Earlier this year, I had the distinct privilege of awarding Dr. Higgs an honorary degree. And for a biologist to have met Dr. Higgs and Dr. Hawking in a single year is almost too much to uh, comprehend. <laughs> Another scientist you may have heard of, Oliver Smithies, an esteemed faculty member at UNC, is a Nobel Prize recipient for his work in changing the way we think about gene therapy. And it was a wonderful uh, privilege and pleasure to visit the Nobel Museum downtown and find his banner hanging from the ceiling and find the chair where he'd signed his name. There's one more Carolina person I'd like to mention because he's another graduate of UNC, 
And although he's not directly related to research on black holes, people have said that he defies Newton's law of gravity, especially on the basketball court. And his name is Michael Jordan. <laughs> yes. As educators and researchers here together today, our mission is to explore the biggest challenges and mysteries, and equally important, to inspire others to do so. We all know that exploration starts with curiosity. Every one of you has your own stories, from, likely from very early ages. When I was a little girl, my parents gave me a telescope, and I was sure I was going to see Sputnik. Uh, but I remember that moment because when I peered through that lens for the first time, I began to think in a completely new way about new worlds and unimaginable distances. And I know that we all continue to feel the same sense of wonder about the universe. As the leader of a university charged with opening the minds of students every day, I especially appreciate what Professor Hawking has done to pull the cosmos closer to so many people around the world. That's what his ideas and his books have done for me and for so many others. Millions of people across the planet have read or been touched by A Brief History of Time. And they've seen his theories come to life in critically acclaimed films. He pushes us to open our eyes and to open our minds. He takes some of the most complex and profound questions like, why are we here? Where did we come from? And he answers them in simple language and simple terms for generations of young people. Quite simply, our students have grown up in a world shaped by Professor Hawking's theories. And now, I believe more than ever, they believe that the answers to the universe's toughest questions are maybe within their reach. In a speech marking his 70th birthday, Professor Hawking offered these wonderful words. He said, remember to look up at the stars and not down at your feet. Try to make sense of what you see and wonder about what makes the universe exist. Be curious. And however difficult life may seem, there is always something you can do and succeed at. It matters that you don't just give up. One of the reasons Professor Hawking is so admired is not only that he has permeated pop culture, but that he shows the world that science and scientists can be fun. From appearances in comedies to cartoons to rock albums, he is as funny as he is brilliant. And as a person living with ALS, he shows the world what courage, character, determination, and curiosity can accomplish. I read his Facebook page today where he had made an announcement about his excitement about the conference. And Hundreds, thousands of people were writing to him, talking about what he meant to them and how excited they were that he was going to make more advances. And I thought I'd just quote from one because I thought it was fantastic. This person wrote, one day I will be proud to tell my grandchildren that I lived in the time of Stephen Hawking. All of us here are grateful to be here at this time of his presentation here to us in Stockholm. We're looking forward to this privilege, and I'm so glad to be able to greet you. And now, before we greet him on the stage, I'd like to introduce one more special guest to introduce Professor Hawking. <laughs> 